What's good Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanji back at it with another video and in today's video we're going to discuss Gus Bradley, the Raiders new defensive coach. Was it a good hire or was it a bad hire? Well, let's just jump right into it. All right, guys, jumping right into this, I want to discuss Gus Bradley and just kind of give you guys my thoughts and opinions. Now, I have been watching film for the last hour or two uh, of Gus Bradley's different defenses. So before we get into like the statistical part of, of kind of where he ranked, I want to just give you guys my thoughts and opinions, at least my initial thoughts and opinions. Uh, Gus Bradley has been a really good defensive coach for two to three different teams, right? Um, now, he's been a defensive coordinator two times. He's been a head coach once, right? Over his last three jobs, that's kind of what he did. You know, he built the Seattle Seahawks defense, and he was one of the reasons why that defense was as dominant as it was. And, uh, you know, you can have a great defensive coach. You can have a great head coach. Um, but there's just that one guy that implements defenses, that schemes things out. And Gus Bradley's that guy. He's a good coach from a scheme perspective. Now, here's the thing. Uh, he's not... He's not one of those guys that's going to draw up these crazy plays and, and blitz and do all these different types of things, right? Uh, what Gus Bradley's known to do is he's known to keep it simple. And some of you guys might say, well, isn't that kind of crappy if your coach comes in and he just keeps it simple? Um, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think so. And here's why, right? Um, in, in the NFL, there's maybe five or six defenses you can play, right? You can play a cover two, a cover three, a cover four, a cover six, a cover one. Uh, you know, man to man, and that's kind of all you can play, but you can uh, have different rules, right? For example, but you can have a lot of different variations of defenses, right? Like you can have a cover three, and uh, maybe if the offense is shifted to one side, on the back side, you just have your corner play man to man, and everyone else plays that the same role in a cover three. You can make it look as a cover three, and then you can quickly shift that into some sort of variation of a cover two, right? You're kind of hiding things, and I don't think that's necessarily bad, right? Especially when you consider one of the issues with Paul Gunther, right? Paul Gunther, according to some of his former players, he was a horrible coach in the aspect that he did not know 100% what he was doing and it was rubbing off on the players. Like the players were confused going into games. Like they didn't know what the game plan was. They didn't know what to do on certain things. Uh, uh, Will Compton, the, the former linebacker that spent a year with Paul Gunther, said that oftentimes we'd have like 70 plays in total and that was way too many plays. And that makes sense, right? You can't have that many plays. Like, realistically, you should have 10 plays for third down, and then maybe you should have another 15 plays, absolute max for everything else, right? Like, you know, you, first and second down don't matter as much, right? Like, if you're in a third and two, uh, it's not favorable, but you can force an incompletion on third and two, and chances are the team's going to punt the ball, right? Uh, first and second down are important if, if you think about it from... A perspective of in general but it doesn't really matter right like you can give up five yards on first down and you can give up three yards on second down and then you can get a stop on third down right third down is the most important down so if you have 10 plays for third down and 15 for the rest of every other situation you can win games that way and in fact a lot of coaches do do that um the raiders absolutely need to fix uh the communication part of things and i think gus bradley will do that in fact gus bradley's built and implemented two different defenses that have had success one of the issues with paul gunther that the raiders had was he took over a system that was already previously built by the coach in cincinnati and when paul gunther took over that system was already in place he just kind of managed it and just kept it going well what we didn't really think about was the fact that when he came to the raiders he didn't have a system in place instead he had to implement a brand new system with brand new coaches, a brand new team, uh, and brand new players. And he did not know how to do that. And that was the biggest reason why Paul Gunther failed. Well, Gus Bradley, on the other hand, has implemented systems for two different teams. And he's had success two different times. So let's just discuss this a little bit. Gus Bradley first became a defensive coach for the Seattle Seahawks, right? That Super Bowl winning defense was a defense built by Gus Bradley. Uh, in 2008, the year before Bradley got hired for the Seahawks, the Seahawks ranked 25th in points per game. 
Uh, in 2009, he was hired, and in both 2009, the first year he was hired, and 2010, uh, Gus Bradley was kind of implementing his defense. It wasn't working very well because he still ranked 25th in points. So there was absolutely no improvement in Gus Bradley's first two years with the Seattle Seahawks uh, as compared to the year right before he started with the Seahawks. In 2011, things changed, right? In 2011, Gus Bradley's defense skyrocketed. In fact, they were the seventh best defense in the NFL in points per game in 2011. And in 2012, they were the number one defense. And those two years is kind of why Gus Bradley has been a defensive coach. And uh, more than just that, he actually got hired as a head coach. The Jacksonville Jaguars took a chance on him. Um, and basically from 2013 to 2016, uh, Bradley was the coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, they did not do well. In fact, all four of his years with the Jaguars, he pretty much sucked. But uh, here's the thing, right? Being a head coach and being a defense coordinator is much different. And one of the things with being a defensive coach as opposed to being a head coach is on the defensive coach part of it, you're only coaching the defense. As a head coach, you kind of have to take a step back and overlook not only the defense, but the offense as well. And that was where I think Gus Bradley kind of failed with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, uh, once he got fired, uh, the Chargers needed a new coach as their defense was straight struggling. So what the Chargers did was they said, hey, let's go get this, this guy named Gus Bradley who fixed the Seahawks who became a head coach because he was such a good defensive coach. Um, and he did fail, but he did get another another chance. And when he went to the Chargers, he did improve that defense. In 2016, the year before Gus Bradley became the defensive coach for the Chargers, the Chargers were the 29th ranked defense in points per game. In his very first year with the Chargers, the Chargers were the third best defense. In fact, if you guys just think back, look how great the Chargers were on the defensive side of the ball. Um, they were one of the best defenses, and that defense took them to the playoffs in 2018. Um, in 2017, they had the third best defense. In 2018, they had the eighth best defense. Imagine if the Raiders had the third or the eighth best defense. Like, could you imagine how great this team could be with the way our offense is currently right now? Um, now, obviously, with the Chargers, he did get worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, in his four years, uh, his first year, he was third in points per game. His second year, he was eighth. His uh, third year in 2019, he had the 14th best defense in points per game. And the 14th defense is not bad at all. Um, and then obviously this past season, he was the 23rd best defense. Now, uh, here's the thing with the Chargers, right? Uh, in 2016, the Chargers started investing in their defense, right? They started getting players like Derwin James. Uh, they brought in Joey Boza, right? They started spending money on the defense. Uh, in 2017, third best, right? In 2018, eighth best. Uh, but after 2018, they started shifting and they started focusing on the offense. They started paying their offensive players. They started drafting offensive linemen um, and they went heavy on the offense at bought. And because of that, in my opinion, um, they did kind of fall off on the defense side of the ball. And that's expected. If you're not going to spend that investment on that side of the ball, you're not going to have a good defense. And I think that's kind of what happened with Gus Bradley. Now, his worst season with the Chargers was 23rd. And if the Raiders had a 23rd defense, I don't think we've had a 23rd ranked defense in a number of years. Like, uh, it's crazy to think that, right? But we've been the worst defense in the league over the last four or five years every single year. Uh, so if the if the coach can come in and implement some of what he can do or what he has done, I think the Raiders have a really good shot. And I know some people have been talking about the fact that Jalen Ramsey actually pointed it out, that uh, Jalen Ramsey quoted saying, every week we play the same defense. Um, and I think that is kind of being taken out of context, right? Jalen Ramsey in his rookie year was being asked um, why he thinks or what he thinks about the current defense and kind of how he used to play at FSU. And he was talking about the fact that when he was at FSU, he played a variety of different positions. A linebacker, line, lining up on the line of scrimmage, he played safety, he played corner. And when he got to the NFL, he was only playing corner. And that's what he was referring to when he said, every week we played the same defense. He was referring to the fact that he only played corner. Um, well, I'm sure if you went and talked to Jane Ramsey today, He's only played corner his whole entire career. I think he now understands that you only play corner if you get drafted to play corner. That's how the NFL works. Um, again, keeping it simple, 
is not a bad thing. Overall, I'm very excited for Gus Bradley. I think the Raiders have finally gotten the coach that can hopefully take them over the top. Now, obviously, we'll kind of see what happens. We still got to uh, improve at the defensive tackle position. We got to get another safety. Um, but I'm pumped up, man. I'm very pumped up. Um, and I will be breaking down Gus Bradley and some of the things that he did. You know, early on with the Seahawks, he played a 4-3. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars played a 3-4. Or even though he was the head coach and not necessarily um, the, the defensive coordinator there. Um, even with the Chargers, his first three years with the Chargers, they played a 3-4. Um, and then the very last season, this this past season, they played a 4-3. So they've been, she's been shifting in and out. Uh, John Gruden obviously wants to play a 4-3. He's, he's kind of said that. Uh, but at the same time, you kind of have to, right? Like your guys are 4-3 guys, right? Like uh, Cleveland Farrell is not a 3-4 defensive tackle. Um Max Crosby's not a 3-4 defensive tackle, and at the same time, neither of those guys are 3-4 outside linebackers, right? Like, that would be a really big 3-4 outside linebacker if you had Crosby or Furrow lined up out there, right? So, um, it's going to be interesting kind of see what the Raiders do from a scheme perspective, but I'm very excited. You guys should be excited, too. It is something new. Uh, Rod Marinelli will obviously still be there coaching the defensive line, which I think is great. Um... I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. And if you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.